Hey there, YouTube. Thanks for stopping by the channel today and thanks for clicking play. Today, we're going to do a deep dive on the LT7, that is the power plant powering the 2025 C8 ZR1. We are going to bring you a lot of detailed, super, super deep dive on this engine and what makes it so powerful. Of course, speaking of power, that's everybody's talking about is these new power numbers for this car, specifically 1,064 horsepower and 828 pound feet of torque from a twin turbocharged. 5.5 liter flat plane crank dubbed the LT7. Now, just as Tadjib mentioned in the early development of the Z06 and the LT6 program, that the LT6 was going to be bespoke to the C8 Z06. The LT7 is going to be just obviously bespoke to the ZR1. Now, with that being said, you know, the LT7 is not an LT6 with just two turbo slap to it, and then let's call it a day. They were actually co-developed together along the same timeline, whereas, yes, they share some parts back and forth, but for the most part, the only thing they share is the architecture, and then everything has been changed and beefed up for the LT7. Now, you're going to want to follow along with us, guys, here, because you're not going to get a lot of this information from a lot of the other YouTubers that are out there. I have put together a lot of resources as far as deep diving into this engine and what's going to make it so special and how GM's actually able to make a 1,000 horsepower on pump gas. Now, if you want to make big power, massive power with an internal combustion engine, you have three basic tools that you can use at your disposal. You've got big displacement. You've got forced induction or you've got high RPM because horsepower equals RPM times torque. GM wanted to basically make an obscene amount of power, so they used all three on the LT7. We have forced induction, we have 5.5 liters of flat plane crank displacement, and we have an RPM red line of over 8,000 RPMs. You know, this motor is going to be giving us the high RPMs of the flat plane crank of the exotic uh, nature, but it's also going to have a lot of low-end torque because of the twin turbos and how quickly they spool because of where they're mounted on the uh, intake there. Um, you know, when development started on this engine, you know, obviously GM wants every generation to have more power than the last. The C7ZR1 was 750 horsepower, and they started with a target of like 850 horsepower. They figured that would be a good target for them to knock off. Um, and when they started doing their benchmarking and computer simulations, and they said, yeah, 850 is going to do it, no problem. Then they built their first engines, they put them on the engine dyno, and the dyno was running the engine, it looked like it was just kind of loping along, it was limping along, and they said, oh, it's putting out 830 horsepower, but the wastegates were wide open on those turbos, so they weren't even building boost in this motor, so... The engineers kind of looked at each other and said, uh, we can make a lot of power with this thing. So they, they, they understood what they had in the package as far as where the potential was. You know, in the discussions, you know, the, the 850 became 900, 900 became 950. And when they were in the mid 900s, they ended up actually breaking the dyno. So they had to build another dyno to actually be continuing the engine development on this. Then the engineers looked at each other and said, well, they know the Dodge Demon 170 on E85 gets 1,025 horsepower, so then their goal was 1026 on regular pump gas. Lo and behold, they made 1064 on pump gas with a warranty. Right off the bat from the beginning here, just the first glance, as you can see, the initial difference that stands out to you is obviously intake manifold design that's different from the LT6, where it has the two uh, throttle bodies, one on each side for each turbo setup to decrease the amount of tubing that has to be from the uh, cold side of the plumbing back into the intake manifold, whereas the, the LT6 and the Z06 has the naturally aspirated plenum with the two throttle bodies facing rearward um, out kind of into the back of the car. But you can see also it has this new... Um, engine cover that goes along with the new design. I like it. At first, I wasn't sure about it, but the blue kind of goes with the ZR1 theme from years past, but you can immediately see the difference between the LT7 and the LT6 looking at this intake manifold and just kind of the design differences that it's on right there. Now, a lot of the speculation when this car was being developed was supercharger or turbocharger, flat plane crank or cross plane crank. Well, I died on the hill for a cross plane crank conversion. I'm glad that they didn't do that. But the other thing on the supercharger versus turbocharger is uh, why would you use turbos instead of a supercharger? I mean, really kind of what GM has said is that it really boils down to the fact that with a belt driven supercharger, you're going to end up having difficulty 
keeping that lightweight powertrain and the fast revving nature of a flat plane V8. Uh, and you would no longer have this lightweight crank train because you'd be basically having the parasitic losses from turning the supercharger could be up to 200 horsepower, just as in previous generations of ZR1. So the first thing I think you guys are going to be able to notice here, and I'm going to bring this to your attention, is where the turbos mount on this car. Uh, so the turbos are actually integrated into uh, the exhaust manifold as far as the mount. And they mount very close to the exhaust port, so there's very little time between the exhaust gases leaving the manifold or leaving the uh, cylinder head and coming into the turbo to start to pull it. You'll also see there's multiple uh areas where there's going to be charge cooling of the intake air, whereas it'll route up around and then it'll go through an intercooler. It comes back and there's actually another intercooler that comes at right at the end before it goes into the throttle body uh, that will help charge cool that air before it goes into the intake manifold to give as much uh, cooling as possible before that air gets into the engine. Back to the turbo, you know, issue of why turbos, you know, when they were developing this engine, Tatch uh, said that he wanted to make the most horsepower that technology would give us today. And let's talk about those turbos. So those turbos, um, those compressor blade, the tips are traveling up to 1.7 times the speed of sound. The turbine wheels themselves are made of MAR, which is a nickel-based alloy that has even greater heat tolerance than most of the alloys, you know, used aluminum and those type of things. It It's able to withstand temperatures as high as 1900 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, this is crazy. This fact that they're about to, or that I'm about to tell you, is that when you are at full bore, full throttle with these turbos, with this engine, and on 20 pounds of boost, there's so much air coming through the cylinders and then out the exhaust that just from the tailpipes, okay, the amount of air that's coming out will actually provide 37 pounds of forward thrust. You're getting forward thrust from the amount of air that's getting pushed out of the exhaust system in these turbos. It's crazy. Now, in sticking with the theme of built together and sharing some parts that well, when they started the Gemini project, uh, which is the code name for these engines, um, the ZR1 and the Z06 share a block casting. But the ZR1 is built with unique internals, cams, cylinder heads, plus additional cooling measures, an extra oil scavenge stage, and supplementary port fuel injection. And we're going to go into the details of that here uh, coming up. So the first thing we start to break this down is these new head castings with unique ports and larger combustion chambers. You can see those here. You can also see the CNC machining of the combustion chamber on both the exhaust and the intake port area specific to this LT7. There's also added block and head machining to support turbo cooling and oiling uh, just to kind of keep the head cool. But the, the idea of this is to move as much of this boosted air and to have as little restriction as possible for the airflow to get in and out of this head as efficiently as possible and make more power. I mean, these are some really good looking heads and I can't wait for somebody to get a hold of these aftermarket or pull a set of heads off of these and flow bench test these so we can actually see what these heads will actually flow. I guarantee you it is a massive amount of air. They also have titanium and sodium filled uh, intake and exhaust valves, all the trick stuff that they've used before uh, to help make the valve train lighter, more resistant to heat, and also more efficient. So the internals are where a lot of this magic is that GM's able to make this power and make it safely. As you can see here in you know this photo, I'm going to bring it to your attention that the, the we have side-by-side -side the LT7 and the LT6 uh, rod, piston, and wrist pin. And you can see the LT7 has a much thicker wrist pin. You can actually just see that here in the um, picture, and that helps with the strength of the connection for the connecting rod. Now, also, too, you can see that on the um, LT7, you have this basically a dished piston and then the LT6 you'll have a domed piston the dish the dished piston takes out some of the pressure in the cylinders to help lower the compression ratio. So this is how GM is able to do a lot of this stuff with the LT6 architecture, but not based on the LT6 platform in that, you know, you have a 9.8 to 1 static compression ratio in the LT6 due to this domed piston, whereas in the dished piston, which would have a, you know, a kind of almost like a bubble look to it, you can see here how it rises up from the surface of the piston, has a 12.5 to 1 compression ratio, which again makes great power naturally aspirated but when you get into the specifics of you know making power making boost making heat you know if you have a very high compression ratio and you're trying to put a bunch of boost in there and a bunch of heat in there you're going to get early detonation and that's bad for motors that's when you break rods and blow up motors 
Okay, and you can also see here these connecting rods. These are nice, beefy connecting rods, but they're also titanium, which is stronger, lighter, helps you spin the uh, rotating assembly uh, quicker, and they also handle heat better than a steel connecting rod. Obviously, there are unique cam load profiles to the LT7, given that it is a force induction application and not naturally aspirated. With naturally aspirated applications, the cam and opening and closing uh, is designed to basically pull air through and get the air, almost a scavenge effect, and get it in and out of the cylinder head, burn as much of it as possible, and get it out as efficiently as possible. Whereas when you have a forced induction application turbos or superchargers you're actually blowing air in so basically the cam profiles are going to be different because you're not scavenging as much you're just trying to blow the air for or the air through and force that through as quickly and as efficiently as possible and get a good burn uh, in the cylinder itself. Now also you'll see that we're going to end up getting variable valve timing which will help as far as making low end torque and then high end horsepower and the, the timing of the cams can be advanced as the RPMs of the motor go up. Now the similarities between both motors are that you know they both use the same block casting, the same 104.25 millimeter bore and 80 millimeter stroke, and the same basic dual overhead camshaft valve train with rigid mechanical finger followers. The intake and the exhaust files both measure 45 and 35 millimeters respectively in both engines, and fuel is sprayed directly into the cylinders from the exhaust side of the head, creating turbulence. This in the combustion chambers allows it to get a better burn and get a better mix. So we can make more power. Now making all this power requires a lot of fuel. So the LT7 actually supplements the LT6's direct injection with a port injection system. The ZR1 actually will idle on the port injectors and then as you start to accelerate, it will blend the two systems throughout the operating range and then at full throttle, it'll be calling on all 16 injectors to feed the machine premium unleaded gas at a rate of two gallons per minute when you're at full throttle extended high speed runs here you can see the breakdown of the crank the flat plane crank with the connect titanium connecting rods connected to the pistons now these are actually the Z06 domed pistons you can see, but uh, just bringing you this picture so you can see the architecture will be basically the same, except for the ZR1 is going to have unique counterbalancing because it has the bigger wrist pins uh, and more meat on the end of the titanium connecting rod, so that'll change the balance a little bit, and that's why they have to do that. The last thing I want to bring up is this anti-lag technology that uh, GM has worked into this and it's it's really amazing so um, they have electrically actuated wastegates that have given the engineers more control or finer control over boost pressures plus the ability to activate an anti-lag mode when the, the car the ECU senses that you're entering braking or you're coming off of throttle to slow the car so as the throttle closes and the fuel delivery shuts off, the waste gates shut to maintain boost ahead of the throttle body and kind of ahead of throttle applications. So when you come back out of a corner or you're on the run and you roll back into the throttle, the turbos are already at speed and you have boost ready to go. So there should be almost no lag, no turbo lag on this, which is crazy because these are 76 millimeter turbos, guys. These are huge turbos. Each one of these turbos is capable of making over 1200 horsepower by themselves. So you've got this massive top end on these turbos, but you don't get any of the turbo lag that you would typically get because basically the um, wastegates remain shut so you're not blowing off your extra boost that is going to be right there at the throttle body. When you hit the, the throttle, the blades will open, it'll rush into the intake, and all the happy stuff that makes us happy uh, happens, and we end up getting that horsepower with no lag, which is absolutely amazing. So guys, this car is a technological marvel. Uh, again, it is not an LT6 with two twin turbos uh, you know, bolted to it. It was actually designed side by side with the LT6 through the whole program to be a separate engine already designated to go into the ZR1 as the LT7. You know, this, the Z06 has the LT6, which in my opinion is going to go down like the LS7 is one of the Best all-time naturally aspirated motors ever made. It'll be right up there with the 458's motor. Uh, but I really believe that this LT7 
is also going to be that next level. Like the LS9 um, in previous generation ZR1s, they were just, you know, basically the same architecture, but that much better. I, this, this engine is going to be so robust. It's going to be bulletproof. GM puts it out there with 1,064 horsepower with a warranty. I mean, if tuning ever becomes available and people want to get creative, I guarantee you these motors will be able to handle way more horsepower than that overall because of the technology that's put in them, the quality of the components, and the just next-level engineering that have gone into this. I want to thank you guys for stopping by today. Not many people are giving you the deep dive on this information. You know, they're giving you the highlights. Everybody's focusing on the 1,064 horsepower and the numbers themselves and the 215 plus, you know, top speed, the nine and a half second quarter mile projected, you know, all of these things. But, you know, let's, I really love getting into the nitty gritty of how things work and you know, digging into this motor, the more I started digging into the engineering behind it, the more excited I became, the more fascinated I became, and the more I wanted to put a video together like this so you guys could see, you know, how did GM do this and where are we going in the future? So I want to thank you guys for stopping by today. I want to thank you guys for click and play. Again, like I said at the beginning, if you haven't already, like, share, and subscribe. Help us grow this channel. We're going to be bringing you more tech stuff. I've got more racing coming up. We've got more parts installs coming up. And we've got Corvettes at Carlisle coming up very soon. So, guys, please help us out. Like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for stopping by today, and I hope you enjoy the content.